before we get into today's edition of Dolphins Today, a challenge for you guys. Whoever comments the most on today's video, individual comments, by the way, will get a shout out on a future video. So flood the comment section. Previous time, there's been 100 plus has been the winner. So get your comments. They can just be one, two, three, four, whatever it is. Most comments get a shout out before this year's NFL draft. Speaking of the NFL draft, ESPN's Matt Miller kind of laying out pretty in depth with what he has been told the NFL thinks the Dolphins will do in this year's NFL draft. So quite a bit to unpack here. Let's begin in round one. This is what Matt Miller reported in part of an ESPN Insider article. The Dolphins' round one targets are tough to nail down, but scouts for opposing teams believe the offensive line will be the team's priority at number 21. Miami did just lose some key players of that unit in free agency, the most noteworthy of which was Robert Hunt, who went to the Carolina Panthers. Connor Williams, though, was replaced by Aaron Brewer. And I do think the Dolphins are in the market for more offensive lines, specifically and most likely at the right tack or right guard spot. They're set short-term at, at tackle. I think this team can survive at left guard with Isaiah Wynn slash others in there. Aaron Brewer is clearly going to be one such starter. So is there a, to, to me at least, is there a guard who is available in round one that makes sense? Some options. You know, Graham Barton could play left guard or center for them. Jackson Powers Johnson, I think he's best as a center, but he's played all over the offensive line. Troy Fatanu uh, is a left tackle at Washington, could be a left guard in the NFL. Maybe a try him on the right side. Amarius Mims, I think, is best as a tackle. I kind of don't love his fit, but I'll make this one because I'm a big fan of his game overall. At least for Miami, I don't love the fit as much. J.C. Latham could be a right guard option for Miami. However, I, I think we'd be remiss to dismiss the front four, or five, however you want to call it from the front perspective, for the Miami Dolphins. They are in need there because they lost the best player, maybe the best defender on their team, at least one of them, in Christian Wilkins. And their injury concerns and edge more on Jalen Phillips, by the way, in a little bit here. Some other names this team probably should consider. I don't love the idea of Liatu Latu or Jared Verse in round one because you're going to get those guys healthy at edge and you're going to keep them around for a while. So it's going to become how much you invest in your number three edge rusher. Byron Murphy and Johnny Newton, though, players I like a lot. And I would think those would both be very good picks for the Miami Dolphins. But I, I think with receiver as another kind of, maybe they go down that path. Offensive line, front play, trench play in general could easily be the, be the focus in round one and or in round two. Although maybe not, which we'll get to here momentarily. But first, what side of the ball will the Dolphins address in round one? O for its, its offense, D for defense. It's the pinned comment on today's video. The ad comes on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Now, he, Matt Miller continued about day two's options. What about day two? I've heard tight end is a position to watch. I think TCU's Jared Wiley, Kansas State's Ben Sinnott, and Texas is Jatavion Sanders are names to watch at number 55 overall. Tight end, you've seen the comments from Mike McDaniel before about looking to upgrade at tight end. I get that. Now, they did sign Jonu Smith who I think has ability and has upside as a good piece who can do some slot stuff for you. Durham Smythe is in place, kind of a good backup tight end too. Would they invest their second round pick at the spot? Maybe. My issue is I don't love the tight end class. Jared Wiley was at Texas, transferred to TCU, had a much better season this past year, good, reliable hands, tested really, really well. I don't love him as a blocker, but he has the size to become a a better one from that perspective. I kind of got that old two or, or three, four cheater grade uh, from that perspective on him personally. Ben Sinnott, meanwhile, had a really good year at, at Kansas State and offers some more like H-back, fullback, tight end hybrid role. Also a, a third, fourth cheater grade for me on this front here. I wouldn't be shocked if either Ben Sinnott or Jared Wiley were even the second tight end off the board. JT Sanders has long been projected in that uh, uh, or for that position. I did have more concerns the more we the more we dug dug into him here. The the testing wasn't what I'd hoped it was going to be. I had a second round grade on him, dropped him down to second third. So it's fine, 
these, these are among the top five tight ends, I think, pretty consensusly. And they're not going to be there for you in the f- fifth round. So unless you, unless you want to trade down or trade up or whatever, you got to take one in the second. But I don't, I don't love this tight end class. I thought last year's was so much better, and Miami kind of ignored that position. I think there's a very real chance all three of those players, and frankly, any tight end not named Brock Bowers, I think they're, they're, all, they're all there in the, in the second round. Or maybe Sanders isn't, or maybe one of them isn't, but I think at least two out of three are going to be there, if not all three of them. My issue here with this, you know, Leet's plan, no defense at all? I, I would be a little bit surprised by that. And depending on how the board fell, there are scenarios which just doesn't make sense. The defenders, are, the value's not right there. The, the DTs are all gone. The edges are all gone, whatever. And the O-line value's great, and it's not great round two class in general. You just take the tight end, it's fine. But I think unless the board falls badly, probably would end up being a mistake for me. And I think you will be able to find some good defenders along that, that front to help you out. But we'll see what happens in a little over a week. Now, today's show is made possible by Game Time. Thanks to killer last-minute deals, all-in prices and views from your seat, plus their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. All-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps and find great deals on stuff like Marlins games because those tickets are pretty darn affordable. Maybe you want to go to a the college Miami football game. At least some decently priced tickets if you don't go to maybe one of the best games. But they'll get cheaper as the game gets closer, by the way. That's what the Game Time Guarantee helps out with. You'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app, create your account, and use code chat sports for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create your account and redeem code chat sports. C H A T S P O R T S for $20 off. Over now to the Miami Dolphins and to Watunga Vailoa. The update from on his contract coming in from ESPN. Noteworthy enough update here, although a little bit repetitive from what we've seen previously. Here's what Jeremy Fowler reported on SportsCenter recently. This might be the path of least resistance to get something done because the Dolphins have long considered him a long-term option, but they wanted to see him get healthy. Played a full 17 games last year, 11 wins, 46-plus passing yards. He's in, he's in a good spot. This is a deal that will certainly be at the high caliber of money, but might not be in the $55 million range of the Joe Burrows and Justin Herberts. So maybe that makes it easier to do. The Dolphins have scaled back their spending big time this offseason, in part because they want to pay this guy. It just depends if they can find a sweet spot on the money. The quarterback contract market is expensive, and I completely understand any and all sticker shock when you see $50 million up there, because I think we all can remember the days when Derek Carr and Jimmy Garoppolo were getting $25 million a year to reset the market. That's also how it works. That was Jimmy Garoppolo and Derek Carr resetting the market. I think Tua's a better quarterback now than either of those guys were. So what does this market end up kind of shaking out at? There is a big gap between Jalen Hurts at 51 and Kyler Murray at $46 million. And as the Dolphins know, more importantly, from what we saw with the way the Tyreek Hill deal is structured, the per-year number is great. It'll get, it'll get headlines. I am more interested in what happens in terms of the guaranteed money. Because that is impactful, especially given the injury concerns in the past with Tua. Where does that number check in? You can make it a five-year deal and pay him $50 million a year with ease, but if the guaranteed money's not that high, it gives you ways to get out of the contract. You see that with Daniel Jones. They get out of the contract next year for the Giants. You don't see it with Deshaun Watson. Guaranteed number is a really big number to keep in mind. Now, maybe you're not worried about the injuries and you just love Tua himself. Where do you rank Tua among NFL quarterbacks? Sound off in the comments section. Latest now on Jalen Phillips and his injury suffering the torn Achilles in November. At the Miami Hurricanes spring game, he felt very confident in where things sit, saying, quote, I'll definitely be back healthy for the season. Now, I read that as he's good to go for week one. 
there is some room to fudge. They, well, he meant at some point this season, but I, I think that's how I interpret it. So what do you think? Will Jalen Phillips be ready for week one? Y for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section. Now, Edge is a short-term, I would argue, area of concern. Phillips and Chubb both coming off of injuries, the Achilles for Phillips, and then later on the torn ACL for Chubb. You have Shaq Barrett in there as a third viable pass rusher. You probably want one more piece. Maybe a young guy to develop can take over for Shaq Barrett down the road as Edge 3 you know, next year. I don't know if that's really worth, though, you know, one of your first-round picks, one of your, one, one of your top two picks. Maybe the Dolphins feel differently. Maybe the value is too good to, to, to pass on. We'll see what happens. The goal is 56,000 subscribers here on Dolphins today. We are 162 away. Help us get there. Don't miss out by subscribing. Briefly here, we do have the details on the Tahir Tart contract. If you watched our videos on it, you kind of thought it might be something like this. It was a very cheap deal as expected, and he's not really guaranteed a roster spot. About half of his base salary, which is just $1.15 million, so the vet minimum, is guaranteed. So I have expectations for Tart, but if the stuff that happened in Tennessee continues to rear its ugly head, they can cut him. But I'd still, I like that move even more now for Miami. Very, very cheap player who can contribute along the defensive front. 